Hey, how's everyone doing today? Today we're going to be going over iSCSI. All right, so let's get started. All right, so iSCSI client and target CLI. This is part of the EX342 Red Hat specialty exam, Red Hat troubleshooting and diagnostics exam. All right, so we're going to talk about what iSCSI is. It stands for Internet Small Computer System Interface. It extends the functionality of traditional SCSI, allowing storage devices to be accessed over an IP network. So on the left side, we have two iSCSI initiators, which they're the clients. And then on the right, we have the target, where the storage pool is located. And then it has a cloud, which is using IP-based um, internet. So it uses IP to communicate. And then the key components, we have the initiator. The initiator residing on a client machine initiates requests for the data storage or retrieval from the target. So uh, the initiator is the client. The target is the server. Uh, let's read this. So the target represents the storage device or server providing access to the storage uh, resources. So pretty simple. We have the initiator and the target, the client and the server. And then it needs a network infrastructure, of course. iSCSI operates over IP networks, uh, utilizing TCP IP protocols for communication, making it easy, uh, easily deployable in diverse network setups. And then just to go over this, um, it uses uh, the block level access. So iSCSI provides block level access to storage devices, and they treat them as locally attached drives. All right, um, and then storage consolidation consolidation so pretty much you have some central servers with storage on them and then data mobility you can basically just unmount and mount it on any server you want so if a server goes bad that data is still uh, safe on the storage device or on the server all right so let's get part to the configuration so what you will need for this is to install Target CLI. All right, it's already installed, so we don't need to do anything. First thing we need to do is do systemctl enable dash dash now target CLI to make sure that it's start and it's enabled. So let me do sudo dash r real quick. And then it should be systemctl enable dash dash now, and it should be target, not target CLI. All right, cool. All right, now that this is done, we're going to do ls block. Okay, we can see here we have xvdb. So this is the storage that we want to be able to have it free for the clients to mount at their discretion, right? All right, so the first thing we're going to do is type in target CLI. Now we can do ls. As you can see, nothing is configured. So we're going to go to the back stores. And then here is where we create our uh, create our stuff. So we're going to do, let's go to block. So let's go to the block. And then since there's different types, like file input output, there's pSCSI and RAM disk, we're using the block because it's block level access. So we're gonna go to the block, and then right here is where we create it. So when we do create, we do the device, which of the device is uh, XVDB, as we saw, right? And then we're gonna give it a name, and the name will be XVDB. XVDB. Okay. Now if we do LS again, as you can see here, we have, now we have one under the block, so if we go to CD and we do it from the root, let's go to, let's go to the um, root, here it is. We can see inside the back stores, inside of block, we have one block device now, but it's deactivated because it's not being used, all right? So once we have this set up, the next thing we have to set up is set up the, uh, the target portal. What this is, this is the portal, how the clients are gonna connect. So this part right here is just for you to have like what block device is going to be used. That's what this is for, right? This is for um, giving access to the devices. So the next thing we can do is go to iSCSI. All right, and then from here is where we're going to create 
the worldwide name, which is an IQN, and the first part should have the year, second part should have the month. And then from here is where you have the .com, so you can put whatever you want, but it has to be in the standard. Um, so I'm gonna do this uh, target, that's the worldwide name for it. Um, now if I do LS, you can see here now on the target portal group, which is one, it's automatically generated, this is the name, this is the access control list, access control list if you have one, this is the logical units, this is where we're gonna put all that info. And then the portals, this is the portal, so uh, this is on local host, it's listing on port 3260. So this is where the client will be uh, connecting to, will be port 3260. So the way it works now, um, when we're looking at it, right, we made the um, iSCSI, and then we made, uh, we gave it an IQN, so the target portal group. But remember why this is important is because this is what allows you to connect to this, right, to the X, uh, VDB. This is just available, right? It's not being used, it's just available. And they connect through this target portal. So the way it works is that now I can go to iSCSI. Actually, I'm already there. So we go to the IQN and then TPG, close target portal group. And then after this, we go to LUNS. Now this is where we're gonna create the stuff that we need. So we're gonna go here and now we can create and what we can do is create a storage object. Or we can do a LUN too. So let's do a LUN. All right, we'll do storage object actually. That's my bad. So for the storage um, object, um, will be back stores block. So this is the location of it, right? So it knows where it's located. And if you go up here, it's located here, back stores block XVDB. Once we press enter, it creates logical unit zero. Now we can do um, CD LS, as you can see here. Now it's activated because now it's in use by the target portal group. Now we can see here that it's activated, right? The default uh, TGP, TGP. You can see the same thing over here. So it's activated now and it's ready to use. We also have access control lists. Um, this is so that way only authorized people can connect to it. So we can do that too. What we can do, I'm gonna copy that. Let's do that. Let's, let's make a um, access control list because this is part of the, the test probably will ask for this. So let's uh, go up to the TPG and then ACLs. Now this is where we create it, right? So now we can do create. Now we can do WWN. And then what we can do is add the name, and then I'm gonna do client. Okay, cool, now this is the name. Okay, let's see. I think we should be good. All right, let's do LS. Okay, cool. So now we here, we can see here, now it has a mapped uh, LUN, which is LUN zero. So the way it works is that there is a portal group, but there's an access control list, meaning that if the client doesn't have this in their uh, configuration, that means that they won't be able to connect. They'll be able to discover it, but they're not gonna be able to connect to it, right? Um, and this is the map to logical unit zero. Logical unit zero is this device up here. And if we look over here on the right side, we can see LUN zero. It's a block device, XVDB, which uh, this is the name of the device, and then it's read and write. So the main three points is that there's the available stores, right? If there isn't an access control list, then this doesn't really matter. Then the, uh, the client can just discover and connect to it, the um, to the server or to the target. So, but when you have an access control list, without this, uh, without this uh, WWN or IQN, you won't be able to connect. So they will need this name in order for it to connect. But remember, without this, you can just connect to it directly um, with this info right here. That's all you're gonna need is uh, the, the 3260 and uh, this name right here. All right, now we're gonna go to the clients and this is where we start discovering stuff. So we're gonna install this. Now that we install this, we're gonna do systemctl, enable, no, iSCSI, p. Okay, make sure is iSCSI d. So now that it's enabled and it's working, now we can use, um, actually first we can do ls block, 
we can see here, it doesn't have any extra device. It just has one device, which is XVDA. That's the only device that it has. And then this is the initiator name, which is important. check if it's correct all right so let's go back here I think I forgot to put the capital letter on this so I and then we need to and for this to make sure that is um, that has the right uh, name on it and then also to initiate your name okay that looks good we have the info there and then the last thing that we forgot was to name this uh, initiatory name. So what we can do, we can do the MV command, which will uh, change the name of the file. Okay. All right, I think that looks good. It looks like initiatory name was already created. Interesting, okay, cool, all right, whatever. So um, this is important because this is the access control list. Uh, without this, we won't be able to actually connect. So that's why this is actually the really important part of it. So now that we're going to try to connect to it, let's go back. 3260 is the port. And then we're going to do type is send target. So once we do that, we can see now that we have a target, um, we can see that this was the name that we gave the target. So now we can actually connect to it. So we're going to do iSCSI, M, and then we're going to use node. And then P, the same exact thing. And then we got to give it a capital T, which stands for target. So because we got the target name now. So this is the target name. So what we did, we discovered if there's any uh, targets available, we can see that there's a target available. And obviously this target has, um, you know, storage underneath of it, um, obviously with access control list. But since we have our file configured correctly, we should be able to uh, uh, connect to it. So now we did all this. Um, let's put this here move back all the way over here to the port only thing is missing is the ADM so we're gonna go over to the left side okay now we're gonna do LS block it's not there yet um, that was a configuration that is sent over so I think we gotta do dash L and this will log you in yeah there it is logging and in inter interface default target so we um, connected to it this was the portal and it said successful that we logged into it. So that's looks everything looks good. So let's look at LS block now. So now if we look at LS block, we have SDA and it's eight gig drive. And if we go back to the um, target where we were earlier, as we do exit, if I do LS block, you can see here that is XVDB. All right, then that's it for the video. Um, if you have any questions, uh, please let me know. Thank you for watching.